What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Happy Wednesday. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. If you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate in those. We're going to talk high level tonight. We're going to talk DTCC. We are going to talk Bank for International Settlements. We're going to talk about mergers and acquisitions in the fintech and payment space, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope this paints a little bit of a larger picture for you as to what you are involved in, or hopefully, if you're watching this for the first time, you can understand how big digital assets truly are and put that in context of what's over what's happened over the past year or so, because we're all focused on the same thing, or at least people watching mainstream media are focused on the same thing. And I hope that you're focused a little bit about what may be going on behind the scenes at a higher level. All right. Jokingly enough, I saw this today. Ripple faces a new class action lawsuit over unregistered XRP sales in Florida. Essentially, a gentleman bought $100 worth of XRP in November of 2020 and sold it at a 50% loss in December of 2020. And it's a little bit of a joke to me. Uh, <laughs> November 2020, 135 XRP. Sold it in two transactions in, in December at a loss of about 50%. So. If you want to say smokescreen, I would agree with you on this. This is just a complete joke to me. Now, I will say it is a little bit concerning. Maybe more people may hop onto this class class action lawsuit, but this is this is crazy timing, right? And it's I'm not a tinfoil hat type guy, but when you start aligning some of the stars here and seeing the ridiculousness of what's going on, I mean, this is what we're dealing with right now. Somebody suing for $50. If you've ever watched Friday uh, and Izale falls in the uh, in the uh, mini mart and he's you know screaming my neck my neck my neck and my back I'm gonna sell it out or he's like I'll sue for one hundred fifty thousand dollars but we can settle it out of court right now for twenty bucks I mean that's that's kind of what I'm what we're dealing with right now with XRP all right bigger picture stuff ACI worldwide and thanks to James Rule XRP I did see this um, this morning and. He pointed this out to me again. I didn't want to neglect to mention it. ACI Worldwide selected to participate in Federal Reserve's pilot program for its upcoming real-time payments offering. This is FedNow. If you're not aware, FedNow is essentially real-time payments from the domestic standpoint. It's supposed to be rolled out in like 2023-ish. And a uh, supposedly at some point may go um, non-domestic and cross-border as well. ACI Worldwide, I am not trying to sit here and speculate but we do know that they're tied into Ripple. This is still on their website. To put this into scope for you all, ACI supports around 9% of global SWIFT traffic, traffic and 30% just in the US alone domestically. Read this sentence. ACI supports real-time schemes around the world, meaning that any bank can use real-time payment systems to support SWIFT, FIN, GPI, DLT, for example, Ripple, Wire and immediate payments. I believe this real-time payment system is referring to ACI's UP, their up payments. So yeah, take that for, for what you want to take it as. Uh, a little bit about mergers and acquisitions. If you're not aware of the past three years, we've seen more mergers and acquisition deals um, in FinTech in the payment space than we ever have in history. And I believe very much so that it deals around digitization, digital payments, and certainly at the uh, in the end game here, digital assets. ACI Worldwide signs uh, PayWorks licensing agreement. PayWorks is essentially a point of sale payment infrastructure provider. That was 2017. 2019 Visa acquired PayWorks. We've got a Visa doc or a Visa little slide here from Credit Suisse from 2020, essentially stating that they are allowing for bolt on acquisition to enhance technology and service offerings to banks, merchants, acquirers. They're giving, for example, Earthport and PayWorks right down there. Visa acquired Earthport in 2018, I believe this was. And also, obviously, Earthport is a Ripple partner. All right, moving forward. DTCC essentially handles the majority of clearing as far as derivatives are concerned. And we know derivatives essentially get the global market cap up into the quadrillion dollar range. Uh, DTCC is the major player in derivatives clearing. CBDCs, how should privacy be built in? This is a presentation from DTCC uh, hosted on Unchained here. So check this out. And as well as the Federal Reserve Bank, I think this gentleman's from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston here. If you want to watch this video about central bank digital currencies, I certainly recommend you do this. This was just posted on January 19th, 2021. Have not seen uh, 
very many people post about this yet. And oh, how the rhetoric shifts. Mr. Augustin Car uh, Karstens, the general manager of the Bank for International Settlements, one of the large players globally from a banking standpoint, along with the International Monetary Fund, etc., talking about digital currencies and the future of the monetary system today. There's a lot in here, ladies and gentlemen, but I did want to point out a little bit about Bitcoin. And if you read this document here, you guys know that I don't hold Bitcoin. That is not saying that it is <clears throat> not a good investment decision for you. I am looking at long-term uh, long sustainability from the digital asset standpoint, in my opinion. I think Bitcoin's got a good full little bull rally to, to do this year with the parabolic cycle, I hope. And I think that we see another full bear cycle and probably another full bull cycle in Bitcoin too. Now, that being said, they talk a lot about Bitcoin not having any value, not being a store of value, not being a P2P um, exchange mechanism that is worth anything. Uh, essentially talking about online gamers exchanging real money for items that only exist in cyberspace. That's what they're comparing Bitcoin to. And that is wrong, <clears throat> in my opinion. Bitcoin still does have value right now. And from a value um from a store value standpoint, it certainly still has value, especially if you're involved in the digital asset space. If you've been around this space long enough, you've been through a bear market and a bull market, et cetera, in the full cycle, what asset maintains value more than anything else? It's certainly Bitcoin. And arguing the fact that Bitcoin does not have value or is too volatile along with any other digital asset is stupid because we this asset class just started 11 years ago, just started, and we hit a trillion dollars already. What do you think happens when more capital flows into the space? And we're not talking a trillion, but we're talking 10, 15, 20 trillion dollars. And the blue chips, the quote unquote blue chips that have made it through, they're not going to be nearly as volatile. We, we start thinking a decade out, 10, 15 years out, you really think Bitcoin's going to drop 80% in a day, whatever the entire digital asset, I'm saying, assuming Bitcoin is around in 20 years, whatever's number one, whatever's number two, whatever's number three. Those drops aren't going to be 50%, 70% in a day. I mean, maybe on the cra crazy, crazy, crazy days, you might see like 15, 20%. Similar to what you see stocks at right now, maybe a little bit more volatile. As more money comes into this space, in the digital, digital asset space, and that money is coming, you are going to see less fluctuation in the main digital assets, the top 10, the top 20. Uh, and drops like 10% are going to be historical in a number of years, similar to what happens with the stock market. What happens is when Bitcoin started and it did a thousand X, there was barely any money in Bitcoin, right? As you get more and more money into this ecosystem, it becomes much harder to move that same asset on a percentage based scale. Okay. That's why you see Bitcoin potentially, you know, these bull markets going down from a percentage based value rise. Okay. And you, I, if you think Bitcoin is going to go up 1,000x in this bull run, you're wrong. If you think it's going to go up 100x in this bull run, you're wrong. Uh, we went up, what, from two grand or a little over a grand? So we went up like 20x last bull run. We probably won't even hit 20x from $20,000. That would put us at, what, 400 grand. That's not going to happen, in my opinion. You're going to see another cycle before that. However, the efficiency from a mining standpoint of proof of work, that's where I have an issue. Uh, a side side effect is that the system uses more electricity than all of Sis uh, Switzerland, which is true, obviously. I'm going to leave you with this because my computer is going to die. FPOS did a proof of concept with micropayments with Hedera Hashgraph about seven months ago. And FPOS is the debit card system of all of Australia. And we see today that FPOS becomes a governing member of Hedera's board. And I had it on here. Now I'm going to have to go through and search for it because I went to Unstoppable Domains. So the proof of concept was obviously a success. And this is Christian Hasker welcoming, welcoming Hedera um, to the Hedera Governing Council, FPOS Australia, in great company. And they have them right there, right on the main page. So that's fantastic. Uh, I did want to touch base real quick. If you were not aware, uh, Unstoppable Domains just partnered with uh, OKCoin. OK or OKX, I'm sorry. OK, coin. Own uh, hashtag crypto, get your name dot crypto, a human readable blockchain domain name that now works on OK, coin and 40 plus wallets and apps. Learn more about how we're making crypto easier for all. I will post the medium down there. I am actually an affiliate of Unstoppable Domains. It's really like the only uh, the only thing besides status XRP community posters that I wasn't being I wasn't being paid for the posters, obviously. 
uh, to promote. And I got into Unstoppable Domains from a, a, an affiliate standpoint because of the pay string. Originally pay ID, but now the pay string initiative through Ripple. And blockchain domains arrived to crypto exchanges with OKCoin. So this is essentially the first exchange really starting to do this. And we're thrilled to announce that OKCoin, one of the world's largest crypto exchanges, will now be supporting blockchain domains, making OKCoin the first exchange to use human readable domain names to simplify deposits and withdrawals. And I'm all about simplification in this space. I'm certainly all about the Ripple ecosystem. And we know this is a pay string initiative. So again, I hope you guys have a fantastic night, morning, evening, wherever you happen to be, afternoon. And I will talk to you tomorrow if there is news to present. Later.